Special triangles, the third lesson in our triangles unit together. Last time we learned about angle sum of a triangle. We looked into what it looked like to calculate the angles within an equilateral isosceles scalene triangle. Today we are going to extend that on some more problems. So hit preview, or you, for you again, attempt quiz now. Teacher mode always says preview. And then we're gonna have these eight problems, starting with the first one. Triangle ABC has two angles that each measure 84 degrees. The measure of the other angle is blank. Well, we know from before, and have this Desmos calculator up, if you don't already, that we start with 180, and if we have two angles that each measure 84, we just go minus 84, minus 84. And our other one will be our answer. And remember to not use 84 if you don't have 84 in your problem. Use the numbers in your problem. So 84, 84, and 12 are all less than 90. So that is an acute little triangle. And then two sides match, the ones that match the 84 degree angles. And if two sides match, that is isosceles. Okay, so now we're going to dive into seven other problems that use the angle degrees and properties of these equilateral isosceles, potentially scaling triangles to solve for x. The first thing to remember with number two is that these tick marks always mean that the sides match. And if the sides match, that means the angles match. And so if this angle is 68, then the right angle over here is also 68. And number two is literally that simple. It's just saying, hey, can you figure out what the markings mean on my triangles? If so, use that to solve for x. No computation for that one. We will on number three, though. It builds up from there. Now you can see on number three that it is like one step above the one we just had, where I know if my right angle is 47 degrees, then my left angle down here is also 47 degrees. And if I want to solve for the angle up top, well, then I've got to take 180, and I've got to subtract both of my 47s. And I'm going to do that. As always, I have to close out of all this writing to use the calculator. It's a little annoying, but it's the best I can do filming these videos. So here we go. Closing out. So for you, start with 180. Subtract whatever your angle is. I've got this 47 over here twice. And I get that this angle that looks like it could be right, could be approaching obtuse, is close to that, 86. It's just barely an acute angle. So this is still an acute isosceles triangle. Okay, now number four, we're switching it up from an isosceles to an equilateral triangle. How do I know that? It's because every angle is the same and they're all 60. We've done that a few lessons now. 60 degree angles all the way around is an equilateral triangle. And if my angles match, that means my sides match. So we're gonna do a little algebra here. So write it down on a piece of paper or on an envelope, whatever you have around you. Write the two sides equal to each other. And then we're gonna use our sad me. Sad me. It's the emo acronym of Dylan's class with algebra. It's someone so sad, but they're also happy because they're doing math. I don't know. Let's, let's be honest. Probably not. All right. So subtract and add first to both sides. We are adding one. So I have to do the opposite. Subtract one from each side. And as always, do the same thing to both sides. 90 equals 10x. From here, we always divide. It's the opposite of our rabbits, our multiplying rabbits here between this 10 and this x. 90 divided by 10 is 9, so x is 9. So you simply do the opposite of the adding and subtracting, and then the opposite of the multiplying and dividing. When you get it right, you should not get a decimal on this problem. It should be a whole number. My whole number was nine. Halfway done, halfway to go. Number five. 
also an equilateral triangle because we've got the same tick mark on all three sides. And we just reviewed that each of the angles in a equilateral triangle are... Oh, that's right, I can hear you all the way across the freaking digital internet. You're saying 60? Probably not, but, you know, maybe you did. So set it equal to 60, and then we can do sad me again. So I'm going to subtract 21. 3x equals... 60 minus 21 is 39 divided by 3. 39 divided by 3 is 13. Wabam. So set it equal to 60. You don't need the parentheses as well. Subtract, divide, or add and divide if you have a minus instead. Get your whole number. If you get a decimal, you've done it wrong. And wabam. Number 5 is done. We're moving right along. Two equilateral triangles in a row. Do I hear a third one? No. I do not have the same tick mark for the bottom. So it's not equilateral. It is just isosceles with these two sides matching. Meaning I can set these equal to each other. And I'll write it out to the right. It's another algebra problem. Another chance to use. Sad me, sad me. It's our emo acronym for algebra. All right, now we're subtracting. The opposite is adding. 15x is 57 plus 3 is 60. Then divide. If you haven't already, hopefully you're getting really used to this division when you have these rabbits next to each other. You're going to use it so much. 60 divided by 15 is 4. As always, these videos are unofficially sponsored by Wendy's. The 4 for 4. Always a good decision for lunch. And there we go. 4. Also by golf, four. Number seven, it's another isosceles triangle. But this time, notice we have X's and numbers on both sides. It gives us the opportunity for one of my other favorite algebra sayings that I always say. Oh, don't want to forget my X on the right there, 12X minus seven. We have a choice on whether we want to bring our x's to the left or right together or our numbers to the left or right. And when you have this situation, I always recommend asking yourself, as I'm going to do here, self, how do I keep my x's positive? Because when doing math, like in life, you always want to keep your x's positive. Keep a positive relationship with those that you've broken up with in the past. It just makes life easier. Not to mean you ever have to redate them, but, you know, just... Hopefully don't have too many flames from your past, because literally, you could, you could be having some rough times. Anyway, enough of that. I can either move my 12x to the left or my 11x to the right. Because I want to keep my x's positive, I'm going to move the smaller one, this 11, to the right. So I'm going to subtract my 11x from both sides. And notice how I'm doing this. Notice very closely. I line them right up underneath each other on both sides to where they cancel on the left, to where all I have now is this minus 2 left. 12 minus 11 is 1x. And I still have this minus 7 chilling over there. Because I moved my x's to the right, I am going to move my numbers to the left. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. Cancel, cancel. Negative 2 plus 7, you could do this in your Desmos calculator, is 5, is 1x. 5 equals 1x is the same thing as 5 equaling x, it's just 5, but you're probably not going to have 1, so I'm going to still leave that there to show you that last step is still division. For me, x is equal to 5. And as is with the other, you should not get a decimal. Never ever get a decimal. If you need to go back, if I was going too fast, rewind. Don't move on till you are done with number 7. Just put your whole number in. You don't put the x equals, just the 5. And that'll set up our final problem. Another one that's, these get a little bit more challenging as you go through. Solve for x. Now, for the first time, we have no tick marks. Meaning we have a scalene triangle. None of these sides match. We cannot assume they do, so we have to do what we did last time. And do you remember numbers, uh, was it 9 and 10? 
I think it was 9 and 10 of our Engelson lesson. We had to get our like terms together, and we had to set it equal to 180 because we know that all three sides equal 180. So I'm going to take my 5x and my 2x, make 7x. And then I'm going to take my, is that a positive one? Yeah, it's tough to see I was covering it. I'm going to take my positive 1 and my, is that a positive 5 being covered up? Yep. Positive 1 and positive 5 make, combine like terms to make positive 6. Set that equal Two, now let's think about this. If all three angles equal 180, and this is already 90, well, I could, I could also write plus 90 equals 180, but let's skip a step. Let's say, hey, if this whole thing equals 180, and this equals 90, then my other two angles must equal whatever 180 minus 90 is, and that is 90. So combine like terms, Combine like terms of your red x's and your blue numbers and set it equal to 90 because 180 minus this 90 must add to the leftover 90. Once you have that equation written out correctly, you've done actually the most of the work. Now you have the same two steps that we've done with sad me the whole lesson. We subtract and we divide. I think there's something meditative to doing these assignments when you get the hang of it. Something about algebra, about repeating the same steps each time. It just kind of feels good, a little meditative. Obviously, if you're not comfortable enough to write out the steps, sometimes it can be a little frustrating, and I get that. I'm a math teacher that always tries to make your life easier with that because I know that math anxiety is a real thing. But hopefully you've conquered that anxiety, at least for this assignment. You submit all, and you see that beautiful 100%. This one took about 11 and a half minutes to complete. There you go. Another geometry assignment in the books on triangles. I hope that this has found you safe, happy, healthy, and well. As always, this has been your teacher, Dylan, giving you a little virtual lesson, helping out your day. Take care. Best wishes with it. Get some good food today if you have a chance. Maybe some Wendy's.